Hi there, my name is Karen Hewitt. I'm the District 3 District Director, and today I want to talk to you about leadership. Now, there are many different areas to leadership, but what I want to focus on is transformational leadership. When we look at studies, there are really three main forms, and that is transactional, strategic, and transformational. Every leader has a varying degree of each one. However, today, I want to empower you and motivate you to use transformational leadership to help your clubs, committees, and leaders grow with you. Because when someone is inspired to be part of the team and to grow and develop, you're gonna have more fun, get more done, and just have a better time. So in order to understand transformational leadership, we really do need to touch on the other two. Let's start with strategic. Strategic is setting up goals, coming up with plans, and it's very number, very analytical based. Like, oh, we need five more members. How do we do that? Well, if we get an average of one member for, per open house, then we need to do five open houses. If we do five open houses, we need to get four guests at each open. See how that becomes very strategic. It's very numbers based. It's about coming up with a strategic plan. Now, we all should have some forms of strategy in our leadership because this is about setting goals. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I am not a fan of smart goals. I like dumb goals, which are dream driven. They're uplifting. They're method friendly. See how that goes with the whole strategic and their behavior triggered. Now, what that allows you to do is instead of saying, well, we're going to do this for an open house, the behavior is, well, how do we promote our open house? Well, when we do this, we're going to bring this in and we're going to ask everyone that joins our open house as a guest for their feedback and have a discussion with what their goals are. Now we're going to talk about that's strategic very quickly and easily. Then we have the tactical, and this is coming up with almost like war type plans. It's very straightforward problems. It's very operational based. It's okay, five members, go get it. Six PR plans, go get it. And we don't really go into this vision of it, but rather giving the specific plan. Then you have transformation. Now that's less about making decisions or making strategic plans, but rather about inspiring your other leaders to take part in it and encouraging them to come up with their own plans, their own goals and their own systems. Now, with this, we, have, we split into two forms of leadership. We have that transactional and transformational. The transactional is, hey, if you do this, I'll do that. You be my VPM this year and I'll be your VPPR and next year we'll switch. Has anyone had that in their clubs? I've seen it, I've done it. It helps clubs to grow, especially when you have a small core number that you're trying to build up. What's transformational is more about having people come into a role, giving them the opportunity to lead and grow. With transformational leadership, this is the scary part, if I'm honest with you. The scary part is you have to let go. And it is one of the most difficult challenges with leadership. When I say you need to let go, I don't mean like, okay, I'm going to ignore everything that's going on, la, 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 la. No. What I mean is if you pass a task to someone, you have to trust that it gets done and then check in with strategic check-ins. Hey, it's been a couple of weeks. How can I help? Is there anything I can do? What's, you know, just fill me in. By doing this, you're letting them know that you're there to support but not to control. What is the benefit of transformational leadership? Have you ever felt micromanaged? I know I have, and it's difficult. When you're feeling micromanaged, you don't feel like you're growing as a leader because all you're doing is doing tasks as you are told, when you are told, and how you are told. You don't have any decision-making ability. You don't get to grow and try new ideas. And that in itself limits you and your opportunity of leadership. If you don't like being micromanaged, do you think your team likes being micromanaged? No, probably not. So as we get into transformational leadership, we need to understand that there is really four components to this. The first one is to 
understand each individual as consideration. Okay, what do I mean by that? If someone is really good at Excel and somebody isn't, would you give an Excel project to someone who struggles with it or would you give it to someone who doesn't struggle? Not only that, it's what do they want to learn? What are their goals? So this is how, when you're talking to someone about taking on a role or stepping up for leadership, talk to them about their goals. What did they desire out of this? What's in it for them? How did they want to grow as a leader? What things do they want to learn? Where do they excel at? Where do they want to develop? What scares them? Like, oh my goodness, I would love to take on this role, but I am absolutely horrendous at checking in my email. I'll be honest, that's me. I hate my email. It's, but I make sure I do it every day. It's just one of those things. Everyone has things they love and things they dislike. When you have individualized consideration, you come up with a plan that's perfect for that person and no two plans are the same. Does this take longer than the normal cut and pace for each section of your leadership? Yes, it does, but it is well worth it because each of your members of your team will feel more fulfilled, listen to, that their cares and needs are taken care of and into consideration, and that you are actually there to help them grow. Now, the second part is having inspirational motivation. This comes from having a unified vision. I said you needed individual plans, but the vision should be the same. And you must cast a vision for your group. And this is more than, hey, we're going to be distinguished this year. This is, we're going to be distinguished because of this. We are looking forward to putting that pin. We are going to go to conference and we're going to be like, yes, we're a distinguished club. And we have set this off. And oh my goodness, we have had two people get their DTM. And you paint that picture. You start describing how it will feel. A vision isn't just, so we're going to go to conference and get, no, it's you, how great is it going to feel? Who is ready to accept that award with us? Who's going to be there on that stage going, yes, we did it. Who is going to be receiving the detail? Oh, I cannot wait to see you walk across that stage. I'm going to applaud for you. So it is going to be magnificent. It is set the feeling, set the emotions. Sales will say the expectation a little bit, but not as much as, well, this is what we're going to do, but this is what we would like to see. This is how we, I want to take you with me. I want to feel this with you. My vision for District 3 this year was home. What does home mean? Well, home has two parts. One is those foundational bricks like DCP, pathways, DTM, contests. These are things that are put in place by international. You know, every house is built with bricks. But you know what makes a house a home? The family, the inclusion, the diversity, the fact that it is a safe space to grow and learn and feel like people are with you. It's about helping people understand that they are respected. And even if it may be their icebreaker and they're absolutely terrified, we're going to cheer for them, we're going to help them, and we're going to help them reach their goals. So my vision was cast is I want to make this home. I want us to feel like a family. I want us to be in support, in consideration of each other. And that is how I want it to be in this year. And that is the thing I have shared. It has nothing to do with the tasks. It's just how we want to feel. It's giving that vision. So what's your vision for your club? How is it going to make everyone feel? How are they going to feel when they participate? It's also the recognition. Oh my goodness, this person just finished level one in Pathways. We are so proud. How many of you applaud each time one of your members completes a path in your club meetings? How much effort do you put into recognizing the good that they do? These are things to think of when it comes to transformational leadership because we're creating this environment people want to be a part of that they want to learn, they want to grow, they want, they're like, oh my goodness, I've just seen Sarah get this particular path. I can't wait till my name's called out and I'm applauded for getting my path. The third part is the influence. This is basically monkey see, monkey do. And I think this, honestly, is where a lot of leaders, especially in corporate worlds, struggle. 
we've always seen it. The, the it's the joke. It's the joke on a lot of TV sitcoms. Manager goes and sits in the office, puts the feet on the desk, and says, "No, you do all this. You take care of that. You do this. You do that. I'm going to have my coffee and watch a TV show." Leaders don't lead by telling, they lead by doing. They lead, if you want people to explore their educational options through pathways and be in pathways and actively participate. You wanna encourage people to take district roles. Are you on a committee? Are you stepping up? Are you having those conversations? You wanna encourage people to compete in contests. Do you compete in contests? And if you can't because you're in district service, do you encourage your show? Hey, I competed two years ago and it was amazing and I loved it. It was a fantastic time in my life. Remember, people want to see that you are part of it. They don't want to have orders backed at them. They don't want to be told what to do. They want to see that you are there with them and you're working with them. One of my favorite examples when I worked in retail was I would actually clean the restroom along with the rest of my employees. I, yeah, it was not a fun job. Honestly, who wants to scrub bathrooms? No one. But I would do it, say, hey, I'm willing to do it too. How do you feel in work when your manager puts the coffee on? It's like, oh, that wasn't just expected for me? No, when we all work together to a similar goal and we work as a team, all taking part, that creates influence. The next part, and I think this is probably one of the most important part, number four, is to have intellectual stimulation. What does that mean? Quite often what we do is we set people in roles that we know they're good at, we're, we're absolutely sure that they're phenomenal with, they're not gonna have a single problem with, they're gonna be amazing, they're gonna be fantastic, and that way we can leave into it and not worry about a thing. And nine times out of 10, that means that they do the bare minimum because yeah, I do this, this is enough. They just get it done, but they don't grow in the role. How many times can you do one particular role over and over again, doing it exactly the same year over year and grow? The key is to have some stimulation in it. Offer challenges, offer things to break boundaries. And I'm not talking, people have to have boundaries. You can say no, that is allowed. By boundaries, I mean these self-imposed boundaries of what you can and cannot do. Not what you will and will not do, but what you can and cannot. I have met many individuals who are like, you know, I, I can't give a general evaluation. I don't understand the meeting well enough. Okay, we understand that. We understand that it can be a little scary to take on a role that you've not done before in a club. However, is it that they don't understand the meeting or they've never been asked to do it? This is where we stretch that and give them intellectual stimulation, have a mentor help them through the role, show them how, what, where, why, give them the descriptions, help them see things. Maybe, okay, I know you don't feel ready to do general evaluation yet, how about, I'm general evaluator today. Why don't you sit with me and let's work on this together? Or, yes, I'm general evaluator today. Why don't we meet after this Zoom meeting and I'll go over why I gave my evaluation to certain things. I want you to take notes too and let's compare. Let's see what you come up with that maybe I missed or if you catch what I catch. By doing this, we're stimulating and we're pushing people out of their comfort zones in small incremental ways. It's not scary, but it's supportive. And by supporting people to grow, they feel stronger and more confident in roles and they tend to take more on because they feel capable of doing it. And the more we can help someone grow, the better that we can do to help them reach their goals. Because this is what it's about. It is about them reaching their goals, not us, them. So with this in mind, we've gone from transactional, which is, hey, you do this and I'll do that, to transformation, which is, hey, what is it you want to achieve? What's the vision we're going to accomplish? How can I do my part to make this fair? And then how can I help push you out your boundaries so that you grow? I have one story I'd love to tell you, which is someone who became a great friend of mine. 
wanted to earn their DTM. Now, a little nervous about taking on roles, but has grown so much in the few years that I have known this person. Yes, they did earn their DTM. Yes, they grew, they developed teens. They really have developed many great practices. And now there's someone that we look at and go, oh, wow, they did that. And when things happened that they could no longer be part of their leadership role, you know what happened? It wasn't a big fallout, it wasn't a problem. They had created so much transformational leadership in their own role that people stepped right in and took part. This is how we transform. This is how we create a, a leadership system that isn't stagnant. We create people that are willing to step into new roles and individuals that are willing to grow. So if I could give you some tips for what great transformational leaders do, that, that would be this. You know, one, they have a lot of self-awareness. They will be the first ones to tell you when they screw up. They will be the first ones to tell you that they're working on certain things. They'll say, you know, maybe I'm not the best at this, but I'm working on it. They don't have this pretense that they don't know, that they know everything. And they have mentors. Here's a hint, get a mentor. A mentor is a great thing to have. But what you want to do with a mentor is you need a mentor who has been in the position you're working for. Because you, no one can help you grow there if they've not done it themselves. And no one should ever criticize a role if they have not done it themselves. So they have mentors. They're, they practice personal development. That means they are involved in whatever education program or whatever personal development program or coaching program or system program or mentorship programs available. They are doing the task, they are showing up, they are present. And above all, they have no pretense of being perfect. They have no pretense of knowing it all. They're like, hey, I'm willing to learn, I'm willing to grow. Second, a great transformational leader is open-minded. Have you ever heard this phrase? That's not how we've always done it. Okay, great. Guess what? It's time to do things a new way. Here's the beauty of leadership. We have two sides of it. We have the things that must be done and the things that were traditionally done. The must be done is policies, protocols, and procedures. We can't avoid those. If you're a club president, you do get to vote in the district council meetings, and you should. Your voice should be heard. However, because you're present and the president has always, let's see, the president of your club has always led a particular program or delivered a particular flyer or always set up a certain holiday meal, whatever it is, doesn't mean that you always have to. You can inspire others to be part of that, to grow a team. You can delegate but do it not as I'm not willing to do this, but I need help. Or you know, see someone who really loves party planning, for example. Ha let them have fun, let them enjoy it. But what they do is they try new things. What if someone says to you, you know, I think we should have an open house on Zoom and we should promote it on TikTok. Well, our club's never been on TikTok. Why would we have an open house on Zoom and promote it on TikTok? Oh, that's never been done. Okay, you know what? Try it. If it works, if it doesn't, you try it. Let's be open-minded. Gather feedback, come up with a range. This is not the you show. You're not going to go in and go, these are all my ideas and this is how it will be done. This is how everything will be done. It's not a dictatorship. It's listening, it's resourcing. Couple of things that we did this year, I had new committees suggested to me and I was like, well, let's do it. Let's have fun. What's the worst that can happen? We stayed the same where we were. We tried something new and we tried to grow. And that's what we gotta do. We've got to work on growing. Another thing is transformational leaders, they're adaptive and they're innovative. They try new things. 
they go, well, yes. Why don't we give this a shot? Why don't we see what this is? And if something goes wrong, which <laughs> let's be honest, things go wrong. They don't just go, oh, well, this sucks. I'm done. This didn't work. They, adapt, they come up with a resource. They come up with a new plan. They ask for the feedback. They ask for that interaction and they see what can be done differently. Like, oh my goodness. We did this open house. We tried this and we had no guests. What can we do differently for the next one? I said, well, that sucked. We're not going to have an open house anymore. No, we adapt, we grow, we learn, and we see what we can do differently. Another thing is when you're a transformational leader, be proactive. This is not about sitting back and just telling everyone what to do and not doing anything. This is about getting down and dirty with everyone. This is about running with the ropes. This is about helping them. And if you see that maybe someone's struggling, have a conversation. And I'm not talking to, oh my gosh, what are you doing? It's, hey, how can I help you? What can we do to make this easier? Is there an area where we can talk about this so that way we can come up with some new ideas together? Be proactive. Another thing that they do is they lead with humility. This is not about you getting to stand up in front of the room and take everyone's idea as your own credit. It's not about saying, well, I did this, this, and this. This is about saying, hey, look at this team, they did this. Did you see what so-and-so did? Oh my goodness, did you know this person had this, a brilliant idea? And they do, they share it, they share what other people do and they don't take credit for other people's work. They lead with humility. And they also, if they don't know the answer, they don't make it up on the spot. They go, hmm, great question. Let me find out and get back to you. And then follow through and get back to someone. Don't just leave them hanging, that's not cool, okay? So hopefully today what we have discovered is no matter what kind of leader you are, thank you for leading. Everyone has their own unique styles. Everyone has their own opportunity to lead in a great way. What I'm hoping that you'll do is at least take one of these ideas that we've given to you today in this on-demand TLI session and impact it to make it more of a transformational leadership. Take each individual, work with them, develop personalized plans, give them a vision, help them grow, excite them, motivate them, inspire them. And most important, let them succeed and let them take that opportunity to grow and achieve their personal goals. So look at your leadership style and see which one of these tips would work for you.